Morning all. Let's have a look at the game Nakamura vs Adams in the final round of the Classic. Adams, the current British champion, was having a nightmare of a tournament already. He had already lost four games and drawn three. Not a single win. So he was probably feeling a bit down and wanting to sort of end the tournament as quickly as possible with a quick draw. Unfortunately for him, Nakamura had other ideas uh, to create challenges and complications from, from er as early as move two. So after e4, e5, instead of going into, say, um, Adams's martial gambit and having a quick draw, you know, theoretically, unfortunately uh, for Mickey, uh, Nakamura, Nakamura played f4, the king's gambit, which had been played earlier in the tournament by Nigel Short. Um, but Nigel had lost uh, that horrible uh, King's Gambit game, and so why had Nakamura, you know, played it? Did he really have something prepared up his sleeve? So the Gambit was accepted. E takes F4, and it's up to White to prove the value for the pawn. Okay, Knight F3 was played, not the Queen check invitation line, which would have been Bishop C4, which is another idea. So knight f3, and now uh, Mickey played d5. The last time we've seen uh, a game of Mickey as black in the King's Gamut was against Eames in the British Championship, and uh, Eames didn't last very long at all. A possible improvement in that game would have been um, knight c3 at some stage when the bishop was attacked on d5. In this game, uh, it's a slightly different variation, but uh, promising for black nevertheless. E takes d5, knight f6. Okay, so this central thrust with d5 is an often used theme against many of the gambits in the king pawn openings. Bishop c4 protecting the pawn, or sort of protecting the pawn, it can be captured, but the idea is at least to have a good bishop after striking on the diagonal. Knight takes d5. After castles, unfortunately uh, for Naka, Adams played one of the very strongest moves here, which stops, really, the natural d4 from white. Adams played uh, bishop e6, and now the natural d4 is discouraged. Uh, Naka had to be content with a humble bishop retreat back to b3 to keep that bishop protected. If d4, then knight e3 is a nasty shock, hitting the queen, and after bishop takes e3, bishop takes c1, c4, pardon, pardon me, is, is unpleasant. So bishop b3, and really white cannot say he had much of an advantage here. He probably already regretted playing the king's gamut in this particular line anyway. c5, another good move, trying to sort of dissuade again d4 perhaps, and, and clamp it down on d4 pretty soon as well. An actual knight move would add more pressure to d4. And now king h1, not a great advert for the king's gambit. No attacking tensions have been revealed. The f file doesn't seem particularly uh, dangerous for black. Black's king actually seems quite safe. Good development, solid position. Knight c6, another natural developing move. Okay, but here, after this prophylaxis king h1, uh, the intention was perhaps to play d4 without any nasty issue on the diagonal. So d4 is in fact possible now, trying to capture at least some share of the centre, albeit it's a bit late. So d4 is played and doesn't completely lose, apparently. So, however, Mickey reveals the recurrence of the previous tactical theme by playing c4 encouraging the bishop to go back to its on, on pre-position, loose position, for knight e3 to again be effective. So the bishop now goes to a4, breaking yet another rule. So how many times has this bishop moved? Um, it's on, on c4 it moved to b3, then to a4, so it's quite a few times already. Bishop d6, and it seems not only black has got a strong blockade on d5, a clear extra pawn, um, but better development. Uh, so what potential assets could white possibly have here to try and work on? It's interesting, but this next move maybe is, is the seed of something useful. B3, as though 
uh, biting on black sea four pawn. And if this becomes a loose pawn, and, and white would one day collect this loose pawn, then maybe there's a potential for a pawn mass on the queen side. And c3 was played. Okay, but you wouldn't exactly say uh, that this is brilliant for white, because this knight is now also kind of trapped in as well. Where does this knight go? c3 does serve a purpose. This this bishop hasn't got too many squares either. Now that all of these squares have been marked, you know, cut off, basically apart from a3, so it doesn't look the most pre pleasant position at the moment. Queen d3 does attack the c3 pawn, and now after castles, Mickey is content actually to lose the c3 pawn here. Um, knight takes c3 is a bit risky compared to bishop c6 first because I think there's a knight b4. Let's just check this position. Okay, first of all, we can say it's from a technical point of view, it's assessed as better uh, for black. Now, if knight takes c3, I expect there's a major disaster here with knight cb4 or something. Yeah, that's why the, the bishop had to take the knight. Knight cb4. Now knight c3, rook c8, and expect a disaster on c2, or something very, very horrible. This isn't the most pleasant position in the world. If the rook has to go here, this isn't a pretty picture. And the rook invading to the, to the 7th isn't particularly pretty either. The queen being kicked around isn't the nicest either. So this kind of position, not good, not good. Okay, so basically, safety point play bishop takes c6 first otherwise there's big problems with knight cb4 after taking this pawn but now what is uh, gained by this pawn sack anyway this knight takes c3 allowing white to get that pawn did mickey actually slip up there giving up the pawn in the light of the potential for bishop takes c6 and a knight takes c3 what could he have done instead here here it seems okay c3 is actually given by the engines one of the strongest moves in the position but maybe knight b6 as well comes into the radar so knight b6 and say uh, let's say bishop takes c6 was played here this looks like a very nice position as well for black just keeping the pawn on c4 if knight b6 really uh, is useful in that regard Bishop b5, I'm not really sure White is convinced to play yet another move if, with the bishop here if the position did arise. But again, black will be better. So it seems maybe maybe c3 uh, let Naka back in. It's the start of something here. So there's queen d3 and there's bishop c6 to snatch this pawn. Still, still black is better here, uh, but you know, White's uh, bishop here on c1 isn't like amazing. So let's continue. Rook e8. So the e file is going to be useful. Maybe double up rooks on the e file and invade later. Knight takes d5. Bishop takes d5, which is a seemingly strong bishop pointing at White's king. And also e4, of course, is under black's control. But maybe c takes d5 is is also worth considering there. c4, and we look to have the start of something for white, an asset that this pawn uh, mobility might be dangerous in the future. The position looks a tiny bit better, perhaps, than earlier. And the queen now has a parking spot as well, not blocking in the c pawn on c3 which might be useful on the diagonal later. a5 preventing the pawn mass expanding with b4, discouraging it. a3 stopping bishop b4s. f6 and now bishop b2, another move which would pass as normal development actually. Uh, Mickey's f6 is the start of something quite aggressive, but I wonder uh, rook a7 is is looking like a nifty move. I wonder if this f6, if it's followed up with g5, 
are we mixing an asset from white with a potential weakness with black, namely f6 later? Intuitively one would say so, but um, the proof is always in the pudding. Rook ad1, for the moment black is building up on his assets, the e-file, the control of e4, potential for invasion on the e-file. It looks like a positional crush in many respects, where black's got the upper hand here. b4, so these pawns have a lust to expand on the queen side. ab, ab, king h8. White is focusing where, you know, in an otherwise depressing position. I was once told by an IM to, I am to sort of look at you know, your positive assets in the position to try and remain positive. So queen b3 looks to further sort of, you know, push the positive assets, maybe b5, and it takes then c5, and then we would have two past pawns actually, once this pawn um, is bypassed. So rook b7, trying to discourage b5 perhaps, and hitting uh, b4 immediately. So in this position, uh, b5 would probably be quite nasty for white, and they could play bishop c3. But let's check out b5 here. What would happen on b5? Perhaps this would happen. Just c takes b is is one idea. And if c5 here, bishop e7. This really gives white the assets though of these these pawns, and there isn't a, such a clear blockade. Or will there be with bishop d5? Perhaps there will be a very clear blockade now with bishop d5. Black better. Okay, so bishop c3 for the moment delaying this idea of b5. B5 does, of course, you know, suffer from creating a passed pawn for black, this B pawn, if it's going to be temporarily sacked uh, for pawn mobility here. Uh, but it's played nevertheless anyway here. So it's a pawn sacrifice to get some central pawn mobility. And we've seen from a previous uh, loss, or, you know, with an Adams game against Nigel Short, that, uh, cent you know, pawn mobility is a very dangerous weapon at Grandmaster level. So these pawns, are they that dangerous, or is black's pass pawn going to save the day? B4, okay. White is not keen to fracture his pawns, uh, just, just to take here, taking here, taking here, which would leave a sort of measly single pawn in the center, easily blockadable, with black having the B file and other assets. So bishop d2 maintaining uh, these connected pawns. Bishop f8. Now rook d e1, a little bit of pressure all of a sudden on the e file. Is black's b pawn at a slight cost that these resources are tied up protecting it, or is it going to be liberated soon? Now a very aggressive move uh, from Mickey. Maybe he doesn't want the queen like tied down to protect f4 all the time. He plays g5, which carries with it potentially a useful g4. But the downside of this g5 is potentially f6. If white can get on that diagonal, f6 might be vulnerable. But for the moment, this bishop would seem a cosy bishop and useful. Even if f6 was taken, say, by the queen, there'd always be bishop g7s, surely. So queen c4, which unblocks the pawn, inviting the pawn to move. But with the weakness of the last move, when the pawn moves, c3 will become available. And who knows, the diagonal might be actually quite dangerous later. Now here, um, Mickey played a committal move, which is probably technically one of the better moves in the position. But as with a lot of technical moves, which might have come up you know, by an engine or whatever, sometimes it puts uh, the player in a position they, they're sort of skating on thin ice after, to have to follow it up with great accuracy. And here it seems uh, it's a case in point that although this move would seem um, very aggressive and potentially winning. It really has to be followed up accurately because look at what Black, Black has done to the structure. It's a little bit weaker now. F4 is potentially a target, but Mickey's got something, you know, planned to sort out F4 here. Now, possibly uh, one of the better moves uh, for Necker, theoretically, would be to play Knight E5 to reveal an attack on the bishop. I believe knight e5 might be one of the top engine choices here. 
OK, wrong. C6, if we add another one though, nope, 95 not mentioned. Let's have a quick look at knight e5. Maybe it just is horrible. Bishop takes g2. F takes e. Check. B3 and black's doing very nicely. Okay. So let's go back here. In this position, knight h4 was played by Naka, which keeps a lot of complexity in the position. Let's have a look at another alternative. So say c6, rook moves to g7 rather nicely. So it looks as though a g2 attack is being coordinated as well. Maybe potential for f3s. So knight h4 here, f3. Black slightly better, but not hugely better. So maybe, you know, this plan actually, if we rewind back, I don't know, g4 is coming up as one of the strongest moves anyway, or b3. It seems a difficult to play position almost now. It seems that white has some tricks here after g4. And knight h4 is one of the moves favoured, it seems, by Houdini 2.0, as well as c6. Okay. Knight g1, even, is an idea. Knight g1, a humble retreat just to attack f4. Takes. Now, bishop c6 would be apparently one of the strong moves here. And black just better, a lot better. Maybe with rook takes e1 as one of the stronger moves. G takes this is pretty nasty stuff on the diagonal. Rook d7, and it looks as though white center is also in trouble. Now, if bishop d5 setting up a battery, this this looks like a weak position for white, and this is the sort of position that would be great for black to play. I think easier to play as well. Uh, not just technically good, but an easy to play position, uh, which is always a problem with you know engine evaluation numbers. Sometimes they're not easy to play. But knight h4, I believe you know after f3, it looks as though uh, this is really dangerous for Naka. But of course the knight is usefully defending g2 here, and he pushes his pawns. He opens up the diagonal a little bit more. This diagonal is now more open to attack f6, that's becoming a potentially more exploitable weakness. And the immediate threat, of course, is rook takes e4 as well, now that the queen's attacking e4. So Mickey played f takes g2 here, uh, which is a very good move because it has a very good follow-up move. Now actually, was d5 white's best choice here? It's a very sharp position. I wonder. It is one of the top choices, d5 in fact. Okay, so d5, fg, knight takes g2, bishop f3, keeps the knight pinned, and if black can blockade these pawns and maybe push his pawn, he would seem to be okay, but he's got an issue here now. He's, he's sorted out the issue for the frontal attack on f6, but not the diagonal attack, which might come in tactically handy. Now I think this next move was a clear mistake uh, by Nakamura and one of, of some regret. He exposes his own king now a little bit more. Maybe this wasn't needed in this position. Um, let's just check here for what would be one of the best moves technically. c6 or rook takes e8. Or maybe bishop f4 even, or d6. There's a lot of moves here. In fact, king g1 comes up on the radar as well. So the idea is, I guess, just to unpin the knight's king g1. A move like d6 and bishop f4. Say bishop f4, because it is protected by the queen. Whoops, rook takes e1. Rook takes e1, queen a7. Black's just better, really, here, because he's targeting c5. If he doesn't give white a chance to attack f6, then he should be safe. But it looks a bit scary, potentially. Let's say queen d4 hitting f6. 
So either queen takes c5 here, inviting queen f6, just about is, is playable apparently. Or queen a2, even technically stronger, just going on to g2. So in this in this kind of thing, why isn't f6 a disaster? Maybe just king g8 here. And black's not too uh, worried here, it would seem. d5 is dropping, the b-pawn is still menace. So anyway, in the game, another move which does have some practical purposes for the knight to come back in the game. So white has two potential assets brewing now. The pawn mobility, the weakness of f6, the danger of this diagonal. Okay, rook c8, c6. Okay, and it looks as though the center is quite weak and it's attacked now, rook b5. So what does white do about d5? dropping off. Well, he did facilitate the knight moving uh, from the king g1 move. It was unpinned. So the knight springs into action, knight f4. And here it's starting to be quite critical and raise edge for black. Uh, mistake could be costly. He has got this asset of this bishop cutting across as though it's forming part of a mating net almost on the white king. It just needs a bishop on the diagonal uh, to cause serious problems for white. And so black here, Mickey is tempted to throw in bishop c5 check. Now this intuitively strong move might not be the absolute best in the position. Apparently here, black misses the chance actually for b3. In this position, the idea of b3 is perhaps to loosen f4. It's a tactical idea. If b3 and white is encouraged uh, to move the queen, say, to c3, to hit f6, then there's a slight snag with that here. If we just have a quick look at that, queen c3, the queen's no longer protecting f4, the weakness of the last move can be exploited here. Now with the check, bishop c5 check, because a bishop interpolation here, because otherwise, you know, where's the king going, can be answered here with queen takes f4, which is not going to be pleasant for white. So say uh, bishop takes c5, then rook takes c5. And white's king is actually getting it here after queen takes c5. g3 threatening mate. So this is, this is a sharp position which um, is, is leaving white exposed. If he has to play queen c1, no, not threatening, mate. Pardon me. Just, just threatening a very dangerous attack. Um, so say check. Queen h4. And it's looking dangerous uh, for the white king here. But uh, yeah, this this is a bit hard to see, perhaps, especially if he had any time trouble. That this b3 is a lot more accurate, it seems, um, than what was played. So here, queen takes f4. The variations do seem to favour white. Now, if queen takes c5 to pick up the queen on f4, then the centre crumbles, and there's no real problem for black here in this opposite colour bishop scenario. Black would be technically better. So it seems the sharpness here is created. Um, let's just quickly see that again. If um, in this position, well, it's it's dangerous for, for, for white. This is not what white wants. A, a big distraction uh, for any possibility of attacking f6. So let's go back to the game. In the game, unfortunately, uh, Mickey choose, chooses bishop c5 check. And the problem here is that f6 is a little bit more vulnerable in the variations. After bishop e3, any time b3 is played now, it's possible for the queen to occupy c3 to exploit the weakness of that last pawn move to get onto this dangerous diagonal. And without the bishop, you know, securing the white, sorry, the black king, it's a bit more dangerous for the black king. So bishop e3, rook takes e3. And now it is starting to look a bit dangerous. b3, queen c3 looks like a strong response under certain circumstances. Not immediately, maybe, because the 
queen takes f4 also does protect f6. Okay. But let's look at that now anyway, actually. B3. In the game, queen b6 was played, trying to tie down white, but it's only temporarily because the rook can be protected with rook fe1. But what if b3 was actually played here in this position? Maybe actually queen d4, same idea, not losing the knight on, on f4. Indeed, queen d4. And now actually white has the advantage. So say rook f8, rook e7. It's starting to be a bit dangerous for the black king, I think. So here, here either c7 or the blockade rook b1. If c7, now the blockade rook b1. And why is this dangerous for black? Something like c8 here, very tactical stuff. And f6 is a decoy here. Or losing the rook. If rook takes d4, queen f5 is starting to be more dangerous for the black king than the white king. And if black has to sacrifice the queen, then of course, clearly that's the end of the game. That's the end of the game there. So it looks as, as though this is now dangerous for the black king, unfortunately, this situation here. Not because of queen c3 dropping f4, but queen d4 still on this f6 pawn. So queen b6 trying to tie down white, unfortunately, rook fe1. And the queen's not really ideally placed now. It's a bit out of the way. And these pawns are kind of dislocating the black position a bit. The knight's ideally supporting d5. As soon as b3 happens, queen c3 is going to be dangerous. But uh, maybe a miscalculation here, because something stunning could have been missed here by Mickey when he plays now b3. Um, after queen c3, he believed he could just defend the f6 pawn with f, rook f8. The rook is attacked, and it's clear that taking the rook and taking on f6 would spell also mate for the black king. So Mickey's prepared to do a rook sack here, just to speed up his own pass pawn. Unfortunately, and this move was played fairly quickly, to the shock and horror of one of the commentators in the commentary room, Chris Ward, as though why was this move played so quickly? I believe it was played so quickly because it's so concrete. Very, very concrete. There's a very, very concrete and very, very fast threat uh, which white now has with this move. If black uh, queens, there's a nasty shock. In fact, Mickey resigned here. I wonder if you can spot what would have happened if queening here. What does white play here? Um, I'll give you 20 seconds actually, or you may want to pause the video here. It's a very good tactical exercise. 20 seconds starting from now. Okay. The reason why this c7 was played so quickly is because there's a nasty queen sacrifice. The docking computer concept, a very forcing move. Queen takes f6. Seemingly outrageous, giving up the queen, but the rook and sorry, the queen and the knight on e6 is devastating it after c8 queening. It's a mating net that blacks in. Of course, he could put the queen on d8 to delay things a bit further, but it's still going to be mate. So that's why there's a serious threat of queen takes f6 here. So what does black do then if he can't um, queen? He's in big trouble. He can't move the rook, of course, it's tied down to f6. He can't move the rook here. This knight's a bit of a monster, actually, supporting c5 as well. One are, one are black's best moves, or is it just totally gone here? It looks to be black's best move, is technically, it might be queen e3 or rook takes d5. Rook takes d5, let's follow this through, just queening here. And it's not particularly good. Black's pawn is not seeing the light of day. This looks like a desperate computer continuation. A bit short of uh, tempo. Black's king is uh, getting it here. 
Not good. Okay. So a bit of a disaster in the end in the com in the complications, uh, but it required some pretty accurate play from Black, and some deep subtleties based on uh, pretty dangerous tactical ideas uh, to know the difference, to distinguish the difference between <laughs> the immediate check on c5 and b3. It seems uh, so. The immediate check. As many armchair and analysts would say, with, with their 3,200 engines, is not as good as B3. Um, you might think B3. Well, what about actually? Wasn't there Queen D4 anyway, attacking F6? I think with the bishop not committed yet on um, on F8, maybe Queen D4 is not a good move. There's also Bishop C5, just skewing the queen, which is useful. <laughs> so and Queen C3 um, here, as, as mentioned. Or have we mentioned it? B3, Queen C3. Now the check, and we've, this Queen's actually serving a purpose on B8, eyeing this knight. So Queen takes F4, and Black is able to to win this position. I think Black's clearly better here. So a little tiny subtlety affects everything so so much sometimes in chess. You know whether to push a pawn or play a check, and the order in which you do it. Uh, pushing the pawn slightly. Um, Weakens White's queen position, so not the best advert for the king's gambit, really, from the opening stage. Look at how many piece, how many times this bishop had to move, and how many pieces were developed from White. Not too many. This bishop moved to c4. Then, because of this idea, it had to move back to b3. Two moves, three moves from the bishop, one from the king to h. One just to support d4 without disaster on the diagonal. C4 seems like a good idea. Um, the idea of sacking the pawn just for big positional trump cards again, uh, slowing down uh, you know White's development. So Black built up a very nice looking position. One question I guess some of you might have, you know, surely C takes D might slow down any pawn mass from White. Instead of bishop takes d5, I think from an engine point of view, they're both about the same here. C takes d5, or bishop d5. Maybe c d5, maybe bishop d5. Depends what depth you put an engine to. <laughs> okay, so bishop d5 was chosen, which I guess from a human point of view gives gives white glimmer of a something here. This this pawn mass on the queen side. Um. But this idea of tra you know, transforming this pawn mass into two connected past pawns is making the most out of uh, White's assets, clearly. So the pawn sack here, which is double edged, of course, because Black has the B pawn, um, which is potentially dangerous, but it has to be followed up <clears throat> with almost clinical precision, these types of positions. Now, G5, G4, again, this is razor sharp stuff because it's leaving F6 vulnerable. Intuitively, but when do these intuitive, you know, risks appear on the board and prove to be weak? <clears throat> it's an entirely different matter. So d5, fg, knight takes g2, and after bishop f3, which I think was missed by Necker, it's a strong move clearly, and Black's better. But this move, king g1, clearly did have value in the game for the knight playing an important role. Back in the game with knight f4s. Okay, so c6, and you know, black does have clear problems to face and has to play accurately. Knight f4, the knight springs back, protecting d5, and the unfortunate check now, which leaves f6 really uh, becoming an exploitable weakness in conjunction. With this, especially this C pawn, is at danger level on the sixth rank now, only two steps away from queening potentially. So it's this and this which C black going down now. First, F6 is targeted, then the C pawn is going to be used as a decoy now. C7. So the rook's really overloaded. This nasty ch tactic available to white. Queen takes f6 check speeds up uh, White's trump cards here versus Black's trump cards. 
I hope you enjoyed that game and got something out of it. Please uh, leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.